Hello, and uh, welcome to another Edgar Pixelates. Uh, this one is a male Icarian Hunter. Uh, I have tried sketching out a few male poses already, but this is the first one that I was happy enough with to actually pixelate. And, uh, you know, I think it comes out fairly nice. Uh, this is the male counterpart to the female hunter. Uh, they are technically the same uh, enemy. They have the same stats and the same data entry uh, for skills and such, but in the beginning of the fight it will randomize between the two as to which one to put out. In fact, I may make, might make <laughs> another one, maybe two more um, variations of the hunter. And uh, this this is mostly because I'm tired of RPGs where all the enemies look the same. But eh, you know, it it is just my preference to have it where enemies have variations, and there are some games that have that, and I like that. So I try to replicate it. Um, that means that. Each variation that I produce for the same enemy is going to have a different pose and different overall appearance, so perhaps a different armor setup. Uh, like this one, I change the appearance of his boots uh, in comparison to the female version. I gave him a loincloth that actually hangs, kind of like the raider, and I gave him a sort of neck protector. Uh, instead of the straight-up helmet with the feathers, like the female has, which, there she is. I use the same color palette, though, and I ensure, as much as I can, that the spear holds the same shape. The uh, Zulu Ixwa, although this is a little bit longer than the traditional Ixwa, and... Uh, it only has one edge, so I guess it's not really a Zulu Ixwa, but, you know, it, it is pretty close. <laughs> um, I made the blade a little bit, like, larger, but in the uh, details of it, the blade itself is very thin, so it's very good for slashing through flesh and uh, cutting open bleeding wounds. So these enemies, whenever they attack, there is a strong possibility they will cause the target a bleeding wound that will uh, make them take damage over time, which is particularly nasty, uh, considering that most of the enemies in my game are going to have different side effects that the players are going to have to overcome. Uh, my, my game, I tried to make it a little more strategic, uh, if you want to continuously survive. I mean, you could just plow through the whole game like a bull in a china shop if you really want, but you will have to keep stocking up on healing potions or, or food for the whole party, or uh, keep expending healing spells, you know, it's, it's more, uh, you will have to just keep grinding, and it's not going to be as enjoyable as if you uh, try to keep a tactical awareness about the game. And, uh, anyway, uh, what I'm going to try to do with the enemy variations is I'm going to make a, try to make at least three different variations of each enemy. Uh, that way, every enemy has a slightly different look about them. I mean, there is an easy possibility that two enemies may spawn in of the same type and the same appearance, but, you know, it won't be as often as two popping in with completely different looks, and, but the same stats, of course. I think maybe the next few variation, or I think the next variation for the hunter may be a uh, female wearing the armor that I'm putting on this male, or a male wearing more uh, feminine style armor. No, no. The, the chest piece is definitely a uh, sort of male and female uh, difference that I'm 
trying to put there because I want to try to ensure that the corset is uh, reserved for the female Icarians. Uh, that way, players will be able to distinguish between them a little easier. Um, you know, I can see the differences myself more or beyond just the corset and the appearance, but uh, you know, I have to make sure that there is a little more accent uh, in order to uh, distinguish the characters. So the poses, the shoulders, the underbite, you know, these are all things that I can easily pick out, but you know, I need to make sure there's still a little more hints there. <laughs> um, let's see. And, you know, for the male-female thing, I even uh, ensure that with uh, romances that there are a lot of different options. Um, like, whether you choose Kreishi or whether you choose Aramil as your main protagonist, um, sort of in a similar fashion to Star Ocean 2's beginning, I allow the starting player to choose one or the other as the one that they control and they will experience the story through that character's perspective uh, but I also allow that character uh, to be very malleable depending on the player's preferences and uh, there are romance options and not just romance with your companions but uh, some of the characters, the NPCs that stay in the different villages, uh, you would be able to woo them. And you may be able to find yourself a more suitable relationship in a village than you would in uh, your traveling companions. But during the game, there's going to be campfire sequences where you'll be able to discuss different things with your companions, like their uh, backgrounds, uh, their opinions on how things are going, on the choices you've made, that sort of thing. Uh, kind of like uh, Dragon Age, where at the different uh, intervals where you have to go back to camp, uh, you can get more dialogue out of them there than you could on the road. Of course, I mean Dragon Age Origins. It's not like I'm going to be talking about Inquisition. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will put out another one next week. And this is Edgar Kingmaker, and this is me, signing off. Goodbye.